What is going on guys, Nate Gould here, and today we're going to look at the new nuke. It's the first map of the season, I don't think a lot of people put a lot of focus on it, and a lot of people don't know how to play it. It is one of the best maps for us so far, um, because I've kind of figured out a pretty good CT side for it, a good basic CT side. So this isn't anything pro level, this isn't anything that's going to help win a freaking major. But if you're a new team, or an open team, an IM team, and you haven't put a lot of time in a nuke, I'm just going to go over some of the basics of the map, how it plays out, and some things you can do on your CT side. I do think this is still... CT sided, but the issue is people fight for outside more than they need to. And so, if you remember the old nuke, it was like here and here, right? Someone big garage, someone at mini. The issue with that now is this catwalk. This catwalk has a lot more power than you think, and the fact that you don't have to boost to get up here, because you can, you can now smoke the catwalk over mini. And then smoke here and smoke here, and big garage is basically eliminated. So this mini guy gets isolated a lot if you put too much emphasis in big garage. Now you can put a guy big garage to try to op a guy mini every once in a while, or op a guy off the catwalk, at, like from back here. Like you can bait it out, but the way you do that, the way you bait out that free pick, like every second or third round, is by not having a guy outside every round in big garage. If you do that, the guy mini is just not going to peek. If you make him think he has that for free, even though you hear the mini guy hears him dropping then you can keep letting them go, letting them go, letting them go. Make sure you have good inner control, so if they try to push mini, you're ready for it. And then you'll get some free baits. Every every couple of rounds, you'll be able to get an early pick off that guy because he'll be out in the open thinking it's fine. They don't op out here. So we don't really play a guy big garage too much. Our default is a guy mini. He's most of our control. He either watches the cross or he watches the mini drop. So that's player one. I play rafters, and my initial is to come here and I molly door, make sure that this mini guy can get set up. And then our other outside guy comes up here and watches hut. If, they, if they're a team that pushes a lot, he'll molly it. If not, he'll wait and hold the smoke, and then he'll kind of go out on rafters and help here. So he goes from here. Then we have a guy ramp and a floater. Now the floater, um, if they're not pushing ramp a lot and we're solo holding it a lot, the floater will go rafters and we'll play two rafters in it. That's kind of like... His reserve spot, right? If we don't really need him anywhere special, just put him on rafters, and then we'll put a little more emphasis, maybe some guy on the boxes back here, or just a guy going cat right away, or a guy helping the mini guy. Maybe they'll push up close and get try to get an early pick outer. So we'll put more emphasis outside if we don't need it, but usually uh, teams are putting a lot of pressure on ramp because we're not giving them a lot outside anyways. So we have two ramp guys with that floater, or we have the floater go secret. Now the biggest tip I can say, uh, and the thing that's uh, worked the most for me as an in-game leader, is by changing up where we play on CT side a lot. The only thing that doesn't change is that I play rafters and someone plays mini. As far as where they play on ramp, which we'll look at some spots in server in a minute, where they play outside, where we push, where we do what, when we go secret. Sometimes we have a guy just start secret. And just a guy mini, and then we'll put a guy big garage. So he'll put pressure this way, he'll put pressure this way, they'll rush secret and go into another guy. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That's where it's a good time to use this as a bait. But if you use a guy outside every round, they're just gonna start they're gonna know you're putting so much emphasis over here. It's gonna give options for a hut push, and it's gonna give options for a, a ramp push because they're gonna know that you're weak in those two places because you're having so much emphasis here. That's why we put presence in her first, and then fight the cross if we need to, get a couple picks, and then just fast rotates from the ramps. That's another good thing about having two people ramp, someone mini to hear the drop, and someone watching the cross. Because once those smokes goes up, we can have a guy go secret, you still have enough, and a guy that can run hell fast if they push ramp, and you have enough holding in her. So you kind of have everything covered, even though you're not out here fighting for this control. This is nothing, okay? This is nothing because when you default in this map, you don't get any map control. So the default T's, the, the default control T can get is this. This gets you nothing. You have to run through three check choke points to get into a site, or you have to run into a little hallway, into more hallways, or into another little choke point to get into anywhere. You have nothing when you have this. So to fight for outside is kind of sealing this map, because if they stay out here, they're dead. You're going to flank them, and you're going to catch them. So they're either, once they start throwing smokes, they're either going to go mini, they're going to go here, they're going to fake. And your mini guys are going to hear if they run back and they drop and make this. There's so much noise and drops and ladders, like... They're not going to be able to sneak away every time or any time when they're trying to fake. You're going to know if it's a fake. You're going to know if they're coming towards mini with their smokes. And you're going to know if they're going towards secret. And once you know that information, you can just rotate these players around to put them where you need to do. For us, it's been a lot more effective than trying to fight outside because then people just push smokes and kill you. Now, as far as, that's as far as CT goes. We don't fight outside a lot, and that's kind of our setup. 
Now, I'm going to actually uh, stop the video here, and then I'll hop into server, and I'll show you some of the positions we play, because I play A alone on rafters, and I've been pretty successful. And so I'll show you guys how we play there, different places you can play ramp, and different steps you can actually play. And then I'll hop over real quick and just show a couple of a quick T-side um, setups that we do. Most of the time, though, we just kind of do fast stuff, or we do slow op picks. So. Okay. Now we'll look at the default in a little more detail. The map was just kind of to get like, an overview. But first we'll have the mini guy. The mini guy is going to obviously come down here and watch this in case they run hut. Hold the angle for the for the hut push, wherever he wants to do it. He could try to fight the headshot angle. He could try to fight the push. And then basically once I have control, he's going to watch this. Or he's going to watch cross if they smoke right away. Watching this, if he hears a lot of noise on the tin roofs, watch him for the drop. Which is to hear when he sees some smokes, maybe he can catch one off. Or maybe they're going to try to get in the mini and he wants to get a couple of kills as soon as they turn the corner. And also if they like try to flash in or something like that, he's pretty close to it. So maybe the flash will go past him. Or he can at least see it coming, move, and then get like a nice spread. Whatever he wants to do. However you want to do that is kind of on you. Then we'll look at our next outside player. or And also the opera. And so he's going to come and he's either going to mini this. He's going to challenge the peak. Or he's just going to kind of like hold back here for the push. And then once he sees they're not pushing, he'll leave. And he'll fall back rafters. Or drop here to, to help mini. So this way, if they are mini dropping, he can kind of side shot it. Play in these back boxes, somewhere like there. Now, he doesn't know he's dropped right away until they smoke for mini. Because if I start getting hit, he can come back and... Oops. He can come back and smoke in there to help me out. Now, what I do when I come up the ladder, the first thing I do is I molly this. Because I don't want anyone to push him right away. And then I play a lot from here, because I, once this guy leaves and I'm by myself, I don't want to get shot from hut, and I'm kind of in an off angle. When the guy runs out hut, he's going to be looking this line. So in my peripheral, I can see this, I can adjust, and not get shot. So I'm only showing a little bit, just so I can see what I'm doing, and I'm watching the push here. And then if I shift, I have to tell the mini guy, your door is open, I'm not watching it. So he has to know not to get shot, and then I can shift back here later in the round, and then once I know they're not rushing, I kind of like to go on top of hut. Because if I know they're about to do like a mini drop, a lot of there's a molly that lands right on here that we do. And I'll, I'll go over that when we get to the T side. A lot of teams don't do that. But then I kind of get down to here late round. So that this way, if he does get pushed, so he's back here and he starts getting pushed, I can spray some of the legs. And then when this guy comes out, I can spray him. Or when people break the door and try to get an angle. Um, here, let me show you real quick. A lot of people like try to take this fight or they like I don't know they just end up getting over here for some reason I don't know why people go here but when you do go over there either trying to dodge nades whatever it is but when you do go there it's a nice easy kill for me I get that all the time and if they push out you can get it too now if you think they're doing an inner hit and mini is smoked off and you're gonna watch this back here is a good place to watch sometimes I drop if I think they're going to be hitting him fast with like, if it's like a save round, I don't like to be up there too much. You know, they have pistols because this guy will be watching that. I'm going to try to come down here because they're going to rush out and I want to take as much attention so he can turn around and backstab him as well. So this is a good place. And then if he dies and you're isolated in the site, this is a good place to hide while this guy rotates heaven. Because when this guy takes first contact heaven, you can peek out here, peek out here, flash yourself out. That's kind of deep. And then peek here and try to stay alive for as long as you can. So that's kind of my role in the whole thing. And those are kind of the different positions I play. And I also move around the rafters and stuff like that a lot as well. I just try not, when someone, if someone runs out of hut, I don't want them to know where I am. Now, your, your ramp. This is a good angle. There's the classic, like, watching back here, watching behind here with a knob. All these, you know, old school angles. None of that's really changed. Watching here. The one thing I will say is that... Let's see if I can do the smoke first try. Smoke. You can... Nope. If you can flash and get across here... Uh, now I'm going to fuck it up. You can get... You can smoke this off pretty easily. And the, the reason why that smoke works so good is because this player stays back here. And then your teammate... Ends up over like here by himself. And then he peeks wide in the box like we want him to. And then we trade him. So when you see this smoke, what I would do is... 
this guy falls back to over here and this guy just stays behind the box still on this like still holding this angle or stays back here and falls because what you can do is you're covering this side and when they jump through here they're expecting you to be here or here so they're gonna jump through and you're gonna be right there and they're gonna be looking here so leaving a guy there and then you see that smoke falling back and just watching his smoke and then if he starts getting overwhelmed you can peek left with him and then if he's on rafters and gets overwhelmed and you're kind of like over here then all he has to do is drop and all you guys have to do is jump and then you can fall back ramp and you can keep ramp control the biggest thing to do with ramp is to know when to fight and know when not to but if someone tries to throw this smoke here to isolate your other teammate off make sure you're at an angle that you guys can fight together with you can also boost up there but that's kind of a gimmick so i wouldn't do that too much um that's pretty much it what you can do also if you have a team that's going secret a lot and not going ramp is your heaven guy can rotate ramp and then you can use this crossfire from your two ramp guys one here well, i guess i can use no clip like a normal person and one here and you just play a bait and switch i would have this guy take contact first since they're going to be walking out pre-firing that and they're going to be looking vents so this guy takes first contact and the other guy it's kind of like a bait and switch and then when they look back this way you change your angle come back up over here and then you still have a guy mini you still have a guy rafters and then you have a guy from heaven watching ramp so everything is still covered and he's watching ramp from hell and you guys have this so they're thinking that they're getting secret for free because you guys have given up on it and what you're really doing is you're baiting them into a good crossfire where you should be able to get two or three kills and then obviously if you have another team that's going outside a lot like i said earlier you can um send the guy secret right away but don't have him peek and then what you do is you put a lot of pressure towards mini so that this way if they try to get in a mini you have like the crossfire from the mini guy and stuff like that here so that when they rush down here you have this guy sitting here waiting i wouldn't have this guy peek first because he has to worry about that 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 and up there and back there so it's not like hey i'm gonna try to get a sneaky pick which i think a lot of people do they get a little too aggressive you wait here and then you put extra outside control so they think that they can't get rafters and then as they push secret this guy mows out and then you could have your mini guy if if it starts to go well and this guy gets starts getting a big train, you can have the mini guy peek out wide a little bit. Not make sure he's not can't get shot from there, but just peek him wide into the cross and then help you out a little bit. Like trying to peek through the smoke a little bit. That's pretty much it for CT side. Uh, that's basically how we play it. I, I think we've won all of our scrims except for one. Uh, but the one scrim we lost, we kind of beat ourselves because it was I don't know. Everyone got on but wasn't really paying attention. People were like running late and shit, so everyone was kind of frustrated. So we weren't really playing together. I was calling shit, and then people were just doing random shit. But every game we've actually played normally, uh, we've won so far. And our CT side is very strong. And our T side is very basic. So I'm going to end it right here, and then we'll hop back in the server on T side. And we'll go over a couple of basics on that, and then hopefully they'll call it a day. All right, so let's talk about this on the big map for a little bit. Let's clear this up. Uh, for your T side... When you have, we don't default for our T side because this gives you nothing. And if you have this and this, you have to do something right away. So you can't default to get ramp control because once you get ramp control, if you don't move, they're going to pinch you. If you default for outside control, once you get outside control, if you don't move, they're going to pinch you. They're, they're gonna, smokes are going to fade and they're going to find a way to get a pick because there's so many angles. If you try to go outside or you try to go ramp without smokes or any grenades, you'd get destroyed, right? So if you wait until all those grenades fade and you're just standing there, you're going to get destroyed. Now, things you can do is hold outside with smokes, wait for a push here, try to bait out some aggression somewhere else, play for a pick, and then go off of that pick, and vice versa. Kind of like hold outside, see if they'll push when you get ramp control, see if they'll try to peek outside for information, and then try to get a pick. It's less likely. It's more likely to bait out a ramp push because a lot of people try to flank through lobby. Um, so we don't really default. What we try to do is we just do a lot of different kind of uh, fast strats, early control, early picks, um, and moving quick on this map. So I think if you try to play it slow and you burn too much utility and you use your utility, you need to use a lot of utility to get these kind of places like ramp and to try to get out, um, to try to get outside that. You can't waste all that utility, go back, and then not do nothing right away. If you wait too long, you're going to kind of screw yourself. The big thing on this map is making the T's rotate and then trying to catch them rotating. So like putting a lot of pressure outside and make them rotate ramp to secret or ramp to lower and then pushing ramp and getting above ramp and then having that control and then trying to split A through hell or something like that. Because Then you might have the heaven guy jump rafters and try to go lower and they leave heaven. You know what I mean? You want to try to get them moving around the map so they're not watching every choke point and then you try to figure out how they're rotating and go through it. That's pretty much what we try to do. 
but we're gonna jump in real quick and I'm gonna talk about um, I'm gonna talk about a quick a split that we do with four smokes and a molly and I'm gonna talk about how we clear a ramp using one smoke here and one smoke here and then I'm gonna talk about how we do an outside fake to rush um, and then take ramp quick so we're gonna end the video here hop right back into the server be right back okay so we want to look at a couple of strats real quick and do a quick overview try to close this video up before it becomes too long but one smoke I do want to show in depth is this one right here and the reason is is because it smokes heaven and you don't have to break the glass so you don't telegraph that you're coming and then you can throw oops, sorry two flashes here that will blind the guy if he pushes the heaven smoke so I never broke the glass and then this flash here this one went a little shallow but this flash here will blind the guy if he comes out heaven when your team's pushing out he'll be completely blind and when this guy pushes out hut it'll crush him the other nice thing that's really useful about this smoke is that the other smoke I mean there's smokes you can throw all over the place there's one on this corner I know another one over here that you throw from about right there the issue with that is and the issue with even this one is is that it's so much further away to getting inside so it takes a long time for you to get back in and you're trying to throw it to plan off of your mini guys there's also a molly I don't know this one for sure but you can look at the line that you throw just about right there that lands on hut so if you have your the guy running hut here and the guy running uh, mini here or the guy running squeaky here you guys are both gonna get here at relatively the same times because you're right next to each other and you're quicker to help the mini guys out. So while the mini guys are entering, you can already be here helping them out with these guys and the sight guys while they're already pushing through mini. And this will be mollied off so this guy will be dropped here or he'll be trying to like hide back here. So if you have a guy um, come out here, they can hold this while your teammates clear sight. And then if he peeks out, you're holding it from squeaky. So I think this smoke is very, very useful. Just because you have both of these players so close to getting into lobby. And even if you want one to watch the flank, you're both in the lobby. So this way, like say, you know, this guy goes squeaky. And then you're late because you're running from all the way over here. And you miss the flank. And it's too late. He's already flanked. You know what I mean? You guys are getting in lobby at the same time. So if you're going to hold the flank, if you're going to push, you guys are all in the site at the same time. That's the biggest thing about doing an execute is coordination. So that's the big one right there. We're going to have... The three smokes that cover off here, 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 and here. Well, like here, here, and here. And then we're going to have this smoked without breaking the glass and them not knowing it. This molly, two flashes in. They'll flash each other in the mini to pick the guy there. And then you have a guy coming through door, a guy coming through hut. That's our ace split. It's very powerful. It works very well. So the last thing I want to show um, before we end this, what's becoming a very long video, and I apologize for it is how we take ramp because we get a lot of opening picks ramp and that's one of our other strong points is we're really good at doing that so you kind of want to nade so the app can't see you and cross and you're going to hold this here and run and throw and that's going to smoke off here then what we do is we double peek this guy if he's still holding the headshot angles so we're going to go here and here we're going to double peek this and trade this and then what's going to happen is is that i'm going to swing well we're both going to swing and we're going to peek this and then i'm going to hold here and he's going to peek up here. Then once we have that cleared, and we do it a little bit quicker, I'm just breaking it down, and the smoke's just about to fade, then we can double peek this, and clear this angle, and push him back. And then we have ram control. We can smoke... Well, that kind of worked out. Then we can, like, smoke hell and figure out what we want to do. Um, it's very good to get opening picks at ramp because a lot of teams play it alone and a lot of teams also play this wrong when you do smoke there they stay isolated and you can usually get a 2v1 and then a 2v1 um, teams aren't very good about retaking it and dealing with that smoke even though it seems pretty basic and if you do it quick enough and you clear this angle and that angle then if someone tries to peek late you can hold this and smoke this and get ramp control very easily so with three people even two people it's very easy to get picked and then what we do too is we throw those outside smokes and then hit ramp fast, pretty much self-explanatory. You learn those same smokes to throw outside. Have one person drop on mini from the marshmallow to make noise so that they think you are going outside. And then the other guys just kind of rush into ramp, play the trade game. One will probably be rotating under already. So it'll just be like a solo hold on ramp. Um, I'm sorry this video was so long, but I tried to break down as many basic points as I can to help you guys. As far as like in-depth threats after that, 
um, I'm not really going to get into. We try to just do a lot of fakes and a lot of quick stuff, and then we rely heavily on our CT side, which again is about being very dynamic, changing up where you're going, and not sacrificing too many bodies outside, just kind of getting the information. So again, I hope you guys liked the video, and if so, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.